to Chasing Success with your host, me, Zach Wright. All right, so today we are going to be talking about a topic that's crucial for success. What is it? Drum roll, please. It is the power of mentorship. I probably didn't need the drum roll because you saw it in the title. But before we go into this, what I want to talk about is that this is not a coach. This is not an advisor that you have in your investment team or your board of directors or your personal board of directors. This is something different. So mentorship, I want to start off with the definition. Mentorship for this episode is a relationship in which an experienced and trusted advisor provides guidance, support, and encouragement to a less experienced person with the goal of helping them grow both personally and professionally. Having a mentor can be incredibly beneficial in many ways, and this episode, I'll be sharing some of the reasons why. Boom. Add the intro. (laughs) All right, so... Segment one, we're going to be talking about the benefits of mentorship, okay? So one of the biggest benefits of mentorship is that it can help you avoid costly mistakes, making costly errors. So a good mentor has been through the ups and downs of their own career and can offer valuable advice on how to navigate those tricky situations or avoid pitfalls that they themselves have encountered along the way during their journey. Now, this is all relative, right? It could be a mentorship or or a mentor who is coaching you on, or not coaching you, I said it wasn't a coach, a mentor who is mentoring you on entrepreneurship, a mentor who is mentoring you on, on career advancement, a mentor who is mentoring you on life success, Right. So as we're going through this, just think about that. It's a mentor in the overall umbrella of the term. Now, mentors can also help you expand your network. Right. A mentor who is well connected in your industry can introduce you to important people and open doors that might otherwise be closed to you. Now, this is something that I've experienced with my mentor, also coach, also partner um, in business with his company, Dana Growth, and my company, Imeo. His name is Alex Couture. And we actually met whenever I interviewed for Kumu, the, the previous company company that I worked for. I got into the company as strategy staff executive, turned into director of sales operations and sales engineer. Now, this is probably one of the best things that could have ever happened to me Because not only is he my mentor, we also have a similar mindset. And in addition to that, for this conversation, the power of this relationship that I have with Alex is that it provides me a good amount of opportunities that I might not have had on my own, which he's introduced me to some networks that I didn't have in my network, right? He's introduced me to certain ways of thinking that I don't necessarily have the experience. Again, that mentorship is somebody who has the experience and they mentor somebody who has less experience. So I'm the lesser of the experience in this equation. He's also built and operated and ran and sold his own SaaS company, which is what I want to do in the future, right? So having a mentor like this provides so many benefits that it's really, you can't calculate the ROI because it's too exponential, right? In this in this next approach or chapter in my life, a lot of it is coming from the guidance of Alex and that mentorship that we have together. And I'll try to get him on the podcast because I think that would be a really good episode to hear from him. And we have something brewing in the background for, for you CEOs and founders out there. So stay tuned. If you're watching this and you want to know a little bit more, reach out to us, info at imeoconsulting.com. Okay, enough of the plug for Dana Growth and what we're working on in the background. Let's talk about another benefit of having a mentor. Another benefit of having mentorship is that 
it can help you gain perspective. Sometimes when we're working hard, hard towards a goal, it's easy to get tunnel vision, lose sight of the bigger picture. What a mentor can do is provide an outside perspective and help you see things in a different light. And that's exactly what Alex does for me. As I'm working on building up this software or thinking about going through the, the whole process of creating and building the, the, the software, he's asking me the tough questions. And you think about that, like whenever you have a mentor, they're not asking you the easy questions. They're not your friends or your family. I mean, I consider him a friend, but they're not your friends and family who are going to be yes men or women or people that say, oh, Zach, that's a great idea. You should definitely do that. Or they're not going to be that those people who are always questioning in a negative sense what you're thinking about doing. And what I mean by that is whenever I tell some people about my software idea, uh, it's not that they don't get the idea, they, they fully understand it, but they're worried about me investing money, my hard earned money into de developing something when I could just be an employee somewhere, right? Which is understandable. If my parents are saying that, it's understandable. It took me a long time to get here. So they don't want me to move backwards with the risk and lose all my savings. So it's 100% understandable. But the benefit of the mentor giving you perspective is that they're speaking from a point of view where they've been there and they've done that. So it's a little bit different whenever you're talking to somebody who has been a lifelong employee, like my, my mother, and, and saying, hey, I'm going to go start my own thing. You know, she knows that I have IMEO and, but I always have had a full-time position at the same time. So it makes sense that they are concerned and they're going to coach you in that way. But the mentor is actually speaking from, I've been there, I've done this. You can avoid the mistakes that I've done by listening to me. All right. So that is segment one, the benefits of a mentor or mentorship. So let's go ahead and go into segment two, which is finding a mentor, right? Because that's one of the biggest issues or biggest problems on how do I find a mentor? Who would be my mentor, you know? So now that you know the benefits, because we just talked about having a mentor, you, again, might be questioning or wondering how to go about finding one. So the first step is to identify what you're looking for in a mentor, right? Now, I got lucky because my mentor happened to be my manager at a position that I was hired for, right? So I got lucky. So that could be one way about it. You look at somebody in your organization and you ask them if they would be willing to be your mentor. So first step, Ask yourself or identify what you're looking for in a mentor. Are you looking for someone who has experience in your field or someone who has experience running a successful business, right? Once you've identified the qualities you're looking for, you can start to reach out to people who fit the bill, who fit that ideal customer profile, or let's call it ideal mentorship profile, IMP, right? This might mean that you're going to network, networking events, right? So go to Eventbrite and type in your location. See if there's any mentorship or any networking events out there. Or Google, you know, obviously everybody knows Google. Go to LinkedIn. Find events that make sense for you. And right now, and I don't think it's going to change for a long time, if ever, there's a lot of virtual events. Go to the virtual events. Get that person's name. That you, that you really connected with, or they had really good questions, or maybe they were the presenter. Find them on LinkedIn, reach out to them with the subject line, thank you for speaking at XYZ event, or blah, 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 right? Make sure that they know where you're coming from, and then they're more likely to respond to you. So reaching out to people in your network, or even cold calling emails, some someone that you admire, right? I mean, I, I think it was this year's uh, episodes that we put out so far, Steve Jobs reached out to the CEO of HP when he was like 13. And the CEO said, 
yes, you can have some of these parts. And then he, be, then Steve Jobs ended up becoming an intern at HP at such a young age. And the reason was because he asked, right? So many people are afraid to ask because they're scared of hearing no. But if you don't ask, your answer is always going to be no. Just remember that. Okay. So that's really segment two, which is how you find a mentor. So again, just a quick recap. Google some events that you can go to or find a virtual event. Go connect with that person on LinkedIn using the 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 subject of the event so they know that you attended and you're not just like some random person who's reaching out it almost creates a a trusted uh, environment because you went to the same event and you listened to them speak or you heard them have a great question and you were wondering if they could if they were open to mentorship so think about that and start small you know but be ready to hear some no's because these people are busy right and if they're not the type of person who does mentorship, it it doesn't have anything to do with you. It's just not something that they look into doing. So just remember that too. Okay, now segment three, we're gonna be talking about how to make the most of mentorship, right? So once you've found a mentor, it's important to make the most of that relationship. And what I mean is, one key to success is to be proactive in your approach to mentorship. So don't wait for your mentor to reach out to you. Take the initiative to schedule meetings and ask for advice. Now, this is something that I've been working on myself because I feel like this mentor has a lot going on and I want to make sure that I'm not bugging them or taking up a lot of their time because they're probably on other calls, other meetings, doing things that successful people do. But what you have to do is go back to that phrase or that quote, which is, if you don't ask, the answer is always no, right? So don't be afraid to schedule a meeting on your mentor's calendar. Don't be afraid to send them a text. Don't be afraid to ask them for feedback, right? The worst thing that's going to happen if they've already agreed to be your mentor, the worst thing that is going to happen is going to they're going to say, hey, Zach, I'm busy during this time. Let's reschedule for later today, later in the week or next week or let's connect next month, depending on the cadence that you guys decide to 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 go on. So just think about that. Right. Take fear out of it because they've already said that they would be your mentor, right? Okay, I beat that horse. Um, it's also important to open uh, and, and, and be receptive to feedback, right? Your mentor is there to help you grow. And that means sometimes hearing the things that might be hard to hear. Take their feedback and stride and use it as an opportunity to improve. Now, one of the things that I've done or learned, actually, one of the things that I've learned <laughs> from asking for feedback is that when you ask for feedback, especially if it's a mentor, they're going to give it to you, right? So one of the things that you can do is prepare yourself before asking for that feedback and, and really be honest with yourself. Ask yourself, okay, if I ask this question, am I prepared for the response? If not, maybe wait to ask the question or prepare yourself. If, if it's in a position where you need the feedback now so you can adapt, prepare the mentor and say, look, I'm, I'm asking you this right now because I need immediate feedback. But what I'm not going to do is respond to you right away. I'm going to take a moment to think about how I respond or think about how I act after you give me this feedback. So if I'm silent or we change subjects, that's perfectly fine. When I've had time to reflect on it, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how I feel about that or how I plan on acting or taking action from that feedback. 
right? But you have to remember that having a mentor is beneficial because of this simple fact. If the mentor only did this, it would be beneficial, right? So if the mentor only provided feedback to you of a different perspective, of their perspective when they did it themselves, you have to remember that, right? You're talking to people who have already done what you're trying to do. And they most likely have your best interest, as long as it's a good mentor, right? And you'll know from the way that you guys interact. As long as it's a good mentor, their intentions are always good. It's never to make you feel less than. It's never to make you feel like you're not good enough. It's always to help you grow professionally and personally. So just remember that. And as you start to gain this feedback from your mentor, you'll build a better relationship. And what you'll find, at least in my experience, is that your mentor will start to ask you questions and you become the mentor. Not not all the all the way. It's not one directional. It's bi-directional. You will start having these conversations where you start asking the tough questions to your mentor, right? Because they might want to venture into a, an area that you are an expert in, right? So Alex is a big picture thinker. He knows how to motivate teams, lead teams, rally the troops, um, get get ideas and formulate them. And then I know how to turn those into strategy and operations and execute them. So it's like a perfect matchup. Again, just a quick sponsor, Dana Growth and IMEO Company are partners. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and wrap this up because now I feel like I'm rambling. So in conclusion, mentorship can be incredibly powerful. It can be an cr- incredibly powerful tool for your success. Whether you're just starting out in your career or you're a seasoned professional, having a mentor can help you avoid mistakes, expand your network, and gain valuable perspectives, right? So just remember that. If you don't get a mentor or if you're a little bit nervous and you're not ready to reach out to that mentor yet, there are a lot of people. I mean, for instance, I, this Chasing Success podcast, we have tons of episodes at this stage, not as many as a lot of people, but we're getting there. But we have tons of information where I'm talking about my experience or I've had somebody on the podcast where they're talking about their experience. I know Claudia Miller. I know Michelle Yu, I know Casey Tinch, I know uh, Jake Kepler, I know Brooklyn Riley, and she is launching a, a, a photography uh, course coming out, so check out that. These people are sharing their experience and they're offering you their story so you can learn from their mistakes, you can take bits and pieces of their guidance, advice, and apply it to your business, your career, your life. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that are giving great advice. So take advantage of the world that we live in. If you have internet, if you have a phone, you can find a podcast, you can Google an article, you can look up YouTube. So that's the end of this episode. I hope that you understand the power of mentorship. And I hope that you take the leap to go find yourself a mentor that can help you grow as a person and as a professional. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Chasing Success podcast with me, Zach Wright. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform, iTunes, Anchor, Google, Spotify. Please do that. It helps boost up the ratings. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me on social media at Zach A. Wright or on LinkedIn at IMEO Company or YouTube. You can check out our YouTube channel at IMEO Company. Until next time, keep chasing success.